Hi, friends. My name is Tony Curitan. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life Skills FYI. Life Skills FYI provides a set of core adult capabilities to manage work, family, and relationships successfully. It's designed to help build the skills adults need for life. Life Skills FYI teaches skills of planning, awareness, focus, self-control, and flexibility. They are designed for daily living skills to promote successful independent living. Skills that every adult should know, but were never taught in school. Life Skills FYI premieres on Thursdays at 10 a.m. on our My Virtual Academy Facebook page and on Instagram. Today, we are going to talk about what steps you need to take to rent your first apartment. You're moving out on your own for the very first time. And we are going to discuss everything that is involved with that and all the responsibilities that come with it. Okay, so one of the first adult things you're likely to do when you head out on your own is rent an apartment. Renting your first apartment can allow you greater freedom and flexibility. The process can be a bit intimidating at first to first time renters. Today, I will take you through the steps of finding an apartment from checking your local listings to signing the lease agreement and picking up your keys. So let's get started. The best way to start is to break this process down into 10 steps, creating a timeline. And the timeline will mostly depend upon how long it will take you to save the upfront cash money that you're going to need in renting an apartment. But once you save the money, then it'll be no time before you're in your own place. So step number one, determine what you can afford. Figure out how much you can afford every month to pay for rent on an apartment. Take a look at your monthly income. Experts recommend that you only spend between 25 and 35% of your after-tax income on rent and housing. To do this, you can simply divide your monthly take-home income by three. For example, if you make $1,800 a month after taxes, divide it by three, and that will tell you how much of an apartment you can afford to pay in rent every month. That comes out to $600. So you would then start looking at apartments whose rent that's being charged would be in the amount of $600. To go above this, more than this, to pay more than this, you're overextending yourself. To pay less than this, you're saving some money, putting some cash in the bank. Woohoo, good for you. Step number two, start saving. You'll need to put, in order to rent an apartment, is, is the, there's more involved than just paying monthly rent. You are going to need to put a security deposit down when you rent an apartment. And a security deposit is usually equal to your first month's rent and your last month's rent. So just a moment ago, we said you could afford a $600 a month rent payment on your apartment. So your security deposit would then be first month's rent, 600. Last month's rent, 600. That's $1,200. Plus your rent <laughs> for the first month. So $1,800. 
They want a security deposit equal. The bottom line is they want a security deposit equal to two months rent. And then you have to pay your rent for that first month, okay? There are also, or maybe application fees. When you fill out applications for apartments, they may charge you to do that. And it could range anywhere from $15, $20 to $100. It just all depends upon the place. There may also be pet deposits. If you have pets, if you have a dog or a cat that, you know, is part of your family and you want them to be with you, you may have to leave a security deposit for your pet for the damage that they may cause in uh, the rental of that unit. You are also going to need uh, to make deposits on your utilities. Certain apartments may cover all your utilities. For the most part, they will not. But whichever ones they don't cover, you have to be prepared to come up with a deposit to secure your utility account. You're gonna also have to have monies for renting a truck or a trailer when you move your furniture to your new place. Uh, if you decide that you don't wanna be bothered with packing and lifting and moving and you wanna rent a moving company, you're gonna be you're gonna need lots of money for that. So start saving in advance. Don't think to yourself, oh, I want to move out on my own next month. No, plan you have to, in, in order for this to be a successful event for you, you're gonna to have to plan this in advance and prepare. And you're going to have to have some savings with this. Step number three, check your credit. Okay, so management companies, every time you go to a management company, every time you go to any type of apartment housing, they're gonna run your credit because they're trying to determine whether or not you would be a worthy candidate for their building, for their apartment, for their house. And so they're going to do a credit check on you when you start applying. And you don't want to be caught unaware and therefore embarrassed, meaning you go into the rental apartment complex, fill out the application and they pull out, pull up your credit and tell you, Oh no, <laughs> you don't want that embarrassment. So before you start the process, go to the free annual credit report website that the federal government offers and take a look at what your credit is. Truthfully, every adult pretty much know what your credit score is roughly because you know whether or not you pay your bills. You know better than anybody what your credit score is. As you can see in the slide, credit scores ranging between 300 and 580 is very poor. From 580 to 640 is poor. From 640 to 720 is fair. From 720 to 780 is good. And from 780 to 850 is excellent. You want to get as close to excellent as you possibly can. That's why it is important that you pay your bills on time. It is important that you don't overextend yourself. If you can't afford it, then don't get it because you are doing yourself a discredit. And it doesn't just affect immediately. It has long-term effects. So say, for example, you're at home living with your family and you're not mindful of paying your credit card bills or your car note. And you know, you just hit it sporadically here and there, you know, oh, no big deal. And then now your 
25 and 30 and you want to move out on your own and you go to apply and they tell you, no, we are not going to rent to you because your credit is too poor. Credit, paying your bills on time, again, it has long-term effects, effects on things that you don't even think it has effects on, it does. So that's important. Um, if you have good credit, you don't have anything to fear when you put in your application for your new apartment. If your credit is new, meaning you don't have credit, you don't have, you've been racked up credit card bills, you're just, you know, young and you never done it before because there was never a need for it, that that is considered poor credit, unfortunately. They don't have a separate category for just starting out and I've not done any damage on the world yet. <laughs> they don't have a separate category for that. If you don't have any credit history because you're new, that is still considered poor credit. But there is a plan B, if you will. If your credit is new or if you have blemished or bad credit, you can ask a parent if they would be willing to serve, to serve as a co-signer on your lease. What a co-signer is, is a person that is signing on your behalf, vouching for your ability to pay what services and charges are being brought against you in the form of rent every month and guaranteeing that you'll do it or in your absence of doing it, they'll do it for you. So being a co-signer is a very big and serious deal. Personally, I would not suggest that you offer to co-sign for anybody, anybody, <laughs> because, and, and, and I say this in all sincereness, the reason why you shouldn't co-sign is because things happen, unexpected things happen. And while you feel you're doing a good deed and a service for someone who's asking you to co-sign for them, if something happens and they don't have the ability to pay, to pay for that, that payment falls on you. Well, what if you're not able to pay what they have fallen short on? What if you're only able to pay what you have? to concern yourself with. Now you're in a financial strait. So if you're new credit or if you're bad credit and you have some very generous parents that are willing to co-sign for you, woohoo, <laughs> good deal. Um, if you have that ready when you go to apply or a lot more than likely they will uh, grant you your apartment and you'll be living on your own. You may also have to provide a few references, especially um, a good one would be from your employer, especially if you, you've worked there any extended period of time. That looks good to say that you have been working there, you're a good standing employee and they believe you to be able to pay uh, your rent. Step number four, choose your neighborhood. Whether you're moving across town or across the country, you need to determine the best place for you. And the best way to decide on a neighborhood is to visit it. You, you, need, you need to see, you need to examine, and not only just see and go, oh, it's a beautiful place. You also need to see and check out your neighbors and your neighborhood, because in the daytime, is so picturesque and quiet and beautiful, but at night it might be party city and you have to get up and go to work in the morning. So you really have to visit and investigate all of the places that you are considering and thinking about moving because there are a lot of factors uh, that can affect you and your livelihood, you know, if you're not mindful. Other factors that you should be considering as well um, as you know, oh, it's a beautiful 
uh, apartment complex and it's in a nice neighborhood is whether or not the surrounding businesses are, are something that you uh, want to live around and with and that you enjoy. Uh, how far is the apartment from your job? You know, how close are they? Because you don't want this beautiful apartment to turn into a two hour commute to work every day. That takes a toll on you. That's a lot of time and that's a lot of travel expense. You can also ask friends who already live in the neighborhood what they think and what their recommendations would be. Another thing to consider is affordability. We all would love to live in fantastic neighborhoods, but the truth of the matter is all of us can't afford it. So you have to be realistic. I would love to live on, you know, the, the shores of Malibu, <laughs> like anybody else, but I can't afford housing on, on, on the beaches of Malibu. So it makes no sense for me to look there, you know, that's only torturing myself. And if I were, even if I were to manage to secure a home on the beaches of Malibu, how far away from financial ruin would I be, especially if I couldn't afford it? So be realistic. Yes, we want the best, but we have to do what is best for us. To determine whether or not you can afford uh, an apartment in a certain neighborhood, go online and take a look at what the apartments are running for that area. There are many websites that you can go to to assist you with that. Um, Zillow, apartment.com, apartmentfinder.com. Realtor, all of those are excellent websites that you can go to to uh, find apartments, get listings, check out the neighborhoods, see what they're like. All of those are good places for you to go. Step number five, start looking. Once you have secured and set aside the money. Once you've picked your neighborhood, start looking at listings, find listings online that can uh, help you determine what areas you want to go into and live. Network with your friends. Um, also respond to for rent signs that you see as you're driving to work and going out and about your, your, your daily activities. Look at those signs and contact those, those um, numbers to talk to those landlords and, and uh, property managers to see whether or not you could qualify for it. Certainly see what the price range is for places in that area. All of that will be helpful to you when you are searching for where it is you want to live. If the rental market that you've chosen in your city is really tight and limited right now, you may want to expand your search and go a couple of miles outside of the area that you had initially selected because the further out you go, the more reasonable the prices will be. So you may have to expand your search in that way to get a um, really nice, affordable apartment for yourself. Also, you need to be wary of red flags. When you are apartment searching, apartment searching, don't go on Craigslist. Please do not go on Craigslist. Craigslist, nothing against Craigslist itself, but there are numerous scams and people who take advantage that utilize Craigslist to set up their victims. Um, there are many apartment and home rental scams out there where you think you're actually giving money to the property manager or owner and you're giving it to some scam artist and now you have no place to live and they've taken your money. So Beware of scams. 
always ask to inspect the rental property before you agree to anything or before you sign anything. If you are dealing with a landlord or a property management company that is not willing to allow you to go in and physically look at the unit, walk away. You should never agree to move anywhere sight unseen or you should never agree to move anywhere where they're showing you one unit over here and saying that your unit will be over there. You need to see the unit you're going to be living in. Again, red flags. If they're not allowing you to see the property, if they're not allowing you to uh, examine the property, walk away. If the landlord or management company, again, if they're refusing to let you see it before you move in, that's a red flag. Walk away from it. Um, also, if they're offering you something that is so fabulous for so little money, it probably is a scam. You have to understand, and I guess the grocery stores set us up for this, you know, the, your daily sales and whatnot. I guess they do this, but nobody's giving away nothing for free. Everybody is trying to get all of their value out of whatever it is they're selling. So if they're selling a house, if they're selling an apartment or renting an apartment or renting a house, they want the best value for their property rental, just like you want the, the best value for your, your dollar also. So nobody is going to rent you something super fabulous for little or nothing. If they are offering that, again, it is probably a scam and you should walk away. Um, when dealing with your potential landlords or the property managers, your conversation should be respectful and straightforward. You know, they should be professional when they're talking with you. If they're not, I would, I would kind of walk away again, because again, this is a professional situation. This is business. And if the person you're dealing with is not operating professionally, then what does that say about what your stay is going to be like there? That is if you get to live there at all because it's some sort of scam, you know? So you have to really be careful. And always remember, Google the address or the building to verify that this is a real place. Do your research, go online and do some background checks on the, the companies and the people that are saying that they're the owner of and, you know, do your research. Don't just take their word for it because they can take advantage of you. Step number six, once you find the place, if it's within your budget and it's in the neighborhood that you like, and the management company, you check them out and they, they're, they're legitimate, then apply, apply for the place. Fill out the application, put up your application fee, let them check your credit because you, 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 you have to remember every time you apply that that company is going to check your credit. So it's not like um, when you, are filling out your FAFSA and you put multiple colleges down, <laughs> you know, when you're looking for your place to live, when you're looking for your apartment, your first choice is supposed to be the one you want. You can have a second or a third choice if only if the first choice doesn't come through. Don't put in multiple applications at the same time. You put in that application for the one that you want. And then they can tell you, okay, yes, you know, Ms. Jones, yes. We, you know, 
we pass all of the requirements and we would like to offer you an opportunity to live in our establishment. Or if they tell you, um, unfortunately, we cannot offer uh, an apartment to you at this time, your credit history is not good. If you don't have someone that can co-sign for the apartment for you, then that's when you should look at taking a minute and clearing up some of the bad credit that they're referring to before you apply again, because the credit report is gonna read the same for every you know, property manager. They're, they're all gonna see the same thing. And then the other thing they're gonna also see everyone you've applied to before them. And so that will also determine whether or not they rent to you. So you don't wanna do that. Apply for the one that you want, make sure that you have all the money for your deposits and uh, security and all of that. And if you know that your credit is new, have that cosigner ready to go. If you know that your credit is poor because you hadn't been paying your bills, pay those bills off before you apply. If you do that, you'll increase your chances of them saying, okay, well, you know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a lease offer on, on this particular unit. Step number seven, conduct a walkthrough. During the walkthrough, you need to document any pre-existing problems you find with the apartment so that you're not held liable. This means that you have to test everything out. When you're going through that property, that apartment with the property manager, open up the refrigerator, make sure that it's getting cold, make sure that the lights are on, open up the freezer, turn on the eyes of the stove, make sure if it's gas or electric that they work, make sure that the oven works, look at the carpet, look at the wear and tear of it, um, make sure that the sinks and, and the bathtub and the showers, turn them on, test them, make sure that they run. Because once you take possession of that apartment, the responsibility to fix or repair can now fall on you because you've accepted possession of the unit saying that it's okay. If you go through your walkthrough and you point, you point out the different things that are wrong, don't just leave it as, well, I told the landlord, no. Put it in writing, document that the, the refrigerator door is hanging off. Document that the glass on the oven stove is broken. Document these things in writing. You sign it and the landlord or the property manager signs and take pictures. Oh my goodness, the cell phone is the best thing you can use Click, click, take pictures of everything. Again, document it on paper, you as well as the landlord sign it before you take possession. If these are things that he's agreeing to fix before you move in, make sure they're done before you move in. Because again, once you move in, now you place yourself at a disadvantage because you're saying that, I'm accepting this property as it is, and I'm fine with it. And so then when you move out and that same broken glass in the oven door never got fixed, and he deducts the money to fix that from your security deposit, you have proof, you have evidence because A, you documented it in writing and both of you signed and dated it, and you have photographs to prove it. So if anything is off, document it and take pictures. If the landlord needs to fix something, 
get it in writing and take pictures. This is the best way to protect yourself for your future home and your security deposit. Step number eight, sign the lease. Your lease is a contract, so you make sure that you need to understand everything in it before you sign. Often, if you have issues with certain points in the lease, you can alter or discuss it with the property manager before you sign and adjustments can be made, but you have to read it carefully and you have to make these objections to the lease or these notes about the lease before you sign the lease. Um, a few things to look out for within your lease, make sure you check these things. What is the penalty for breaking your lease early? You may find yourself in a situation where um, you have a roommate and you and your roommate are not getting along anymore to the point where you can't live there with your roommate and you wanna move out. Well, you may wanna move out because you guys don't get along, but in your moving, are you breaking your lease agreement? And if you are, how are you gonna be penalized about that? So that is a crucial area that you need to examine before you sign uh, your lease. Also, um, again, cannot stress enough, always do a walkthrough with the landlord or property manager before you take possession and document in writing and with pictures because this will save you uh, a lot of pain and heartache because again, if you don't address the issues with the apartment before you take possession, the likely, and I'm not gonna say the likelihood is not very good because it just all depends, but you don't wanna find yourself in a position where you have issues now with getting your landlord to fix something that you asked them to address when you moved in on the first day. That's why you get it all in writing and you document it with pictures. You also want to check your lease agreement for the area of fixing and repairing issues in your apartment. Who's responsible? Who will be charged? You also want to make special notice of um, how much time you need to give your landlord when you do decide to move out. Say your lease is up in uh, March, say your lease is up in March. How much time do you have to give your landlord in order to move out? Your lease is up in March and you're not sure if you wanna stay another year or not. How much time do you have before you can make that final decision without being charged or assess some sort of penalty? You wanna make note of that. Um, you also want to find out what the rules are regarding having guests in your home and pets in your home. If you have a pet, will there be additional fees? Will there be additional charges? You need to address that. And if you have guests in your home, because believe it or not, there are some leases that don't allow you to have um, guests over certain periods of time staying in your home. So you wanna take a look at that and, and know what your options are. And you definitely wanna know what the rules will be when it's time to get your security deposit back when you move. Step number nine, setting up your utility services. You wanna clearly understand what utilities you're responsible for and what you're not. For the most part, apartment complexes will cover some utilities like water, um, heat, but more likely than not, you will be responsible for a few yourself, which would, which would include utilities like electricity, phone, and cable. So find out from your landlord, which utilities 
they cover which utilities you're responsible for. For example, if your first if your first place to live is not an apartment, but a rental home, well, in a rental home, more, more likely than not, all of the utilities will be on you. Your electric bill, your gas bill, the phone bill, the cable, and the water, all of them will be your responsibility to pay for. So these are things you want to look at and examine and help budget your finances accordingly for, to make sure that you have enough money to cover all of these things. If there, you know, if there are responsibilities that you have to take care of, um, call or go online to schedule an appointment with each of your utility companies at least a week in advance. But the minute, truthfully, that you find out that you got approved to move into your apartment, you should call the utility company immediately and set, you know, and schedule your appointment for them to. Uh, come out and activate services for you. Other things that you should consider when you are moving out for the first time, renter's insurance. I know a lot of people say, well, why do I need that? Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> if anything happens, if anybody breaks into your apartment and steals, if any disaster happens, if, if when, you, when you live in an apartment complex, it's not just you living there. You're living there with countless numbers of other people and say that they are, you know, something happens in their complex, like a fire happens in their unit and it spreads and it hits your unit. Um, tornadoes, anything, anything that can happen. You want renter's insurance there so that you can be reimbursed for any damages that you might incur. Another thing that you want to take care of when you move out, change your address with the post office and make sure you put in for an address train, an address, uh, an address change on your driver's license. Step number 10, make the move. It's time. You're ready. You did it. If you are moving long distance, Make sure you schedule your movers several weeks in advance because dates book up quickly. If you are moving out of your parents' home for the first time and it's a short distance away, more likely than not, they will probably just uh, help you move, you know, load everything up in the truck and help you move. In any case, um, you want to get started and packing your uh, things early. You want to make sure that everything is ready to go because moving takes a long time and it's a lot more um, involved than what you think. Make sure you label your boxes. You know, everything that goes in the kitchen, put that on the label of the box that goes into the kitchen. Make sure that you have plenty of uh, toilet paper and light bulbs and cleaning supplies when you first walk in because it's the first thing you want to do is clean and sanitize your home before you take possession of it and settle in nicely. So all this may seem like a lot. But if you break it down step by step, like we just did, you'll find that moving into your new apartment becomes easy and manageable. And there'll be nothing that can beat the feeling that you'll have when you walk into your door, into the, your new home for the very first time. It's gonna be so awesome because you'll know that it is yours your first place, your, your new home. Well, friends, that's all my time for today. Thank you again for tuning in to Life Skills FYI. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. My number is 586-842-0558. Again, my name is Tony Curitan, and I will see you next time on Life Skills FYI. 
and always remember to adult responsibly.